Peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, is uh, very common these days, and you know it does go underdiagnosed, unfortunately. Um, people have aches and pains in their legs, assume it's musculoskeletal, but a lot of times it ends up being uh, vascular disease. Um, in terms of exactly how common it is, uh, a lot of people have coronary artery disease. The rule of thumb is if you have vascular disease in one part of the body, uh, you have vascular disease throughout the body, and it's just a matter of uh, appropriate screening and treatment. The signs and symptoms of PAD can be very um, nonspecific, and I think that's a lot of the reason why PAD goes underdiagnosed. Um, things like cramping in the legs, uh, just generalized pain in the legs, um, restless leg syndrome at night. A lot of patients have that, but don't realize that can be a manifestation of PAD. Um, for patients with carotid artery problems, dizziness, balance problems, um, even sometimes just memory problems um, can result from carotid artery stenosis. The general public is generally well educated about the risk factors for coronary artery disease or CAD and those same risk factors are the things that contribute to PAD and that includes age, uh, hypertension, high cholesterol, uh, smoking um, and the general rule of thumb that cardiologists use is that if a patient has blockages in one area of the body the likelihood that they have blockages elsewhere is pretty high. Arterial disease and venous diseases are uh, both uh, diagnosed the same way. Um, initially, we screen them with using ultrasound studies, so non-invasive studies that can be done as an outpatient. And they're fairly quick, definitely not painful, and uh, very quickly read by the cardiologists. I'm an interventional cardiologist by training, and uh, so when people think about interventional cardiologists, they think about procedures, which is opening up vessels either using balloons or stents. Um, but in this day and age, uh, with health healthcare reform looming, and um, just as a physician, I'd be remiss if I didn't educate my patients on prevention of disease. And that comes with aggressive risk factor modification, including controlling diabetes, controlling hypertension, smoking cessation. Everyone knows that a certain type of chest pain, chest pressure is associated with coronary artery disease or blockages in the coronary arteries. And when we open the, up those blockages, the results are dramatic. Those patients uh, no longer experience that same type of chest discomfort. Uh, the same thing uh, goes for peripheral arterial disease. Uh, when we open up the blockages um, and restore blood flow, um, patients feel almost uh, immediate relief of symptoms in terms of the amount of walking, running, or uh, activities that they can do. Utah Cardiology and our team of invasive and interventional cardiologists, uh, I think we make a good team with Davis Hospital. Davis Hospital may be a small community hospital, but um, it's got state-of-the-art facilities and we have state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, we do a lot of things that a lot of, the, a lot of the larger university programs, even they don't do. Uh, I just finished my training in Houston and some of the equipment we have here we didn't have in, uh, in the Texas Medical Center. Um, so that's, that's a huge boon to the community, to the patients, you know, and as well as the Davis Hospital staff. Um, I think they're what makes the patient experience uh, well, worthwhile here.